All right, so today we're going to talk about the um, two pathways, the direct and indirect dopaminergic pathways that are um, sure to be tested on your Comlex or USMLE. And I have a real simple way of kind of diagramming it that I'm going to show you. So start by drawing a little candy corn looking thing. Um, this is the putamen and the globus pallidus, um, collectively known as the basal nuclei, basal ganglia, or the striatum. Um, then we have two parts of the globus pallidus. We have the medialis and the lateralis, or the interna and externa, um, whatever way you're going to talk about it. Then we have two structures down here. This is the substantia nigra pars compacta, and then substantia nigra pars reticulata. I'm not, we're not really talking about the reticulata in this diagram, but it just helps me remember that, you know, that's such a thing. And then we have the subthalamic nucleus, the thalamus, specifically VA and VL thalamus, and then the cortex. And I, I kind of just imagine this in my, my head every time I think about these two dopaminergic pathways just to keep it straight. So we have, coming out of the cortex, we have an um, excitatory corticospinal tract and then a corticonuclear tract. And just by convention, I'm going to be doing all of my excitatory pathways um, as a um, just a regular arrow, and then we'll have a blunted edge if it's a inhibitory. So if you have that down, you're, you're most of the way there. Um, and now we're going to start drawing the um, specific neurons. And the way I think about it is in the putamen and globus pallidus, or um, striatum, it's all inhibitory signals. And I draw inhibitory as a open circle, and um, excitatory is going to be a closed circle, but also um, with the blunted edges also. So all of these are going to be open circles, meaning that they are inhibitory. So we have two in the putamen, as we'll see. We have, um, from the substantia nigra, we have a, it's kind of both um, an inhibitory and excitatory, but I just draw it as one arrow coming here, and another arrow coming off of it, because it's two separate pathways, but coming here. And substantia nigra pars compacta is where dopaminergic neurons are. Um, so it would make sense that these are both dopamine pathways. So we have D1 and D2. And just to remember, D1 is a um, G alpha S, and D2 is a G I. So that's inhibitory, makes sense, and excitatory. And both of these pathways are going to lend to the um, direct, and the kind of a way how I remember it is I write D-I-R-E-C-T, and then inhibitory, which is also indirect. So D2, indirect, D1, direct. And it'll make sense why they're called that um, as we go through these. So um, as we said, everything in the striatum is inhibitory. If you have that down, um, makes this really simple. And then everything else is excitatory. So we're going to draw closed circles here. This one's kind of half and half, have we talked about. We, uh, you could draw two separate ones, but I didn't do that for this. Excitatory, excitatory, and then obviously coming from the cortex is excitatory. So we have two pathways. We'll start with the direct. It makes sense why it's direct, because it's going from the substantia nigra pars compacta to the putamen through the D1 um, G alpha S, or excitatory. Um, receptor, and then we have an inhibitory coming to the globus pallidus um, media, medialis or interna, and then we have going directly to the VAVL thalamus, an inhibitory because it's an open circle, and then from the VAVL to the cortex, which is excitatory. So that's the direct pathway, directly to the globus pallidus medialis. Now we have the indirect pathway, which is, it kind of takes a weird, weird way to go through it. So we have from the substantia nigra pars compacta, specifically through the D2 inhibitory receptors, we have an inhibitory signal going to the putamen. Then we have, yet again, another inhibitory signal going to the globus, pallidi or globus pallidus lateralis. And then it takes, instead of going to the medialis, like the direct, it takes an indirect route through, takes a little detour through the substantia nigra inhibitory. Remember everything in the striatum, once again, is inhibitory. Um, and then from the striatum, everything outside of the striatum is excitatory. So we have um, the inhibitory neuron synapsing into the excitatory neuron in the um, substantial or subthalamic nucleus. So we have an arrow coming back 
and it finally gets back to the medialis. So this is how we can see that the inhibitory pathway takes a little extra route through the sub, um, subthalamic nucleus, and the direct pathway goes directly to the globus pallidus medialis. Um, so if you have this down, then you can figure out the pathologies associated with um, loss of dopaminergic, in the sense of Parkin Parkinson's, a uh, subthalamic nucleus lesion or Wilson's disease, also um, both of the same end effects, and then Huntington's disease. So we'll start with Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is a loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, specifically pars compacta. So we'll just draw an X here. Um, this is Parkinson's. And that's a loss of dopamine, both the indirect and direct pathways. Um, and as you can imagine, if you were to erase both of these lines, you, so you have a loss of inhibition and a loss of excitation here, this loss of inhibition is going to cause a, um, a increased inhibition here, and then here is going to cause a decreased inhibition here. Subthalamic nucleus is going to rev up. We're going to have a big inhibitory response coming to the BAVL thalamus. So inhibitory response, big inhibitory. This is excitatory. We lose that. We have a big inhibitory here. Or actually, this is going to decrease, so we have a less inhibitory. So this is going to excite it even more. So we have a culmination of indirect and direct pathways leading to an inhibitory response to the BAVL thalamus. Therefore, we do not have excitation to the cortex. Cortex, low, um, low response through the corticospinal and corticonuclear overall leading to a reduced movement, and that's exactly what we see in Parkinson's. Second one that we see here is going to be Wilson's, or a simple subthalamic nucleus lesion, or Wilson's. That's that mutation in ATP7B, um, which is an extra, or which is a hepatic copper um, ATPase. And remember, the ATP7A is actually associated with Menkes, which is a um, mutation in the uh, extra hepatic copper ATPase. So same thing here. You lose subthalamic stimulation. Um, so we have a loss of excitation here, meaning now we have a less inhibitory going to the BAVL thalamus. We have a more excitatory coming here and a more excitatory coming through the uh, corticospinal and corticonuclear, thus showing why Wilson's has a uh, a characteristic increase in movements, also known as hemibolisms, and that's the same thing as a subthalamic nucleus lesion. And then our final one, we're going to put an X here, and this is Huntington's. And there's some stuff that you need to know for the exam um, about Huntington's, where it, um, it's a trinucleotide repeat, where it is on the chromosome, um, what are some characteristic signs um, via um, gross um, pathology. So the way I remember it is Huntington's, you're hunting for the caudate. So, and then that actual number for the caudate. So hunting for the caudate, the four, um, helps me remember that this is a chromosome four abnormality. Um, you're hunting for the caudate, so the caudate atrophies, that's how I remember that. And then the um, trinucleotide repeat is if you're hunting and you have all of these um, really choreoathentotic movements, you're not going to be able to aim well. You can't aim good. Can't aim good. So this, this is the trinucleotide repeat, and it also helps me remember that um, the CAG, CAG, is caudate loses acetylcholine and GABA. So those are the, those are the characteristic findings. So we have Huntington on chromosome 4, atrophy of the caudate, um, CAG, trinucleotide repeat, and the caudate loses ACH and GABA. <clears throat> so back to our actual figure here. Um, so we, we know what to expect. We should have an overall increase in, um, in movement or increase in excitation through the cortex, kind of like the subthalamic nucleus. So if we inhibit here, we have a, um, a loss of inhibition at the globus pallidus lateralis. Therefore, we have a very big inhibition to the subthalamic nucleus. Subthalamic nu nucleus is now having a loss of excitation to the globus pallidus medialis. That loss of excitation is going to cause a loss of inhibition here from the globus pallidus medialis to the BAVL thalamus. Therefore, that loss of excitation is going to cause a 
reduced inhibition into the thalamus, that reduced inhibition of the thalamus is now going to cause a big activation of the cortex, big activation of the cortex, the characteristic um, choreoathentotic signs of Huntington's. So this is a real simple way of remembering it. Um, I know it was kind of long, but if you can just remember um, the anatomy, just these uh, dumb little pictures, and then it's all inhibitory in the striatum, all excitatory elsewhere, and um, definitely remember that D1 is excitatory, D2 is inhibitory, because um, that could throw you off. And that's the end of um, this podcast.